Hey guys, this tutorial is on transition metals and how to uh, model them. So of course this is uh, just a, a few things. There's a whole um, classes on this and I'm not trying to cover this whole thing, but just a few um, general um, steps. So uh, the important things that you have to th uh, carefully think about when modeling transition metals um, is the uh, coordination number, so the geometry of your um, complex. Uh, you have to think about the charge of the complex and the multiplicity. So today we will look at, uh, at the trihedral versus square planar geometries for four uh, ligands and two octahedral um, complexes as well. The first two uh, molecules are both nickel complexes, uh, both with overall charge minus two. So nickel is a D10 metal and you can get that by just looking at the periodic table and counting from the left. Uh, so if you do the simple math that I have here on the right, you will figure out um, that we need eight electrons in the D orbitals um, in both cases here. So let look, let's look at what it gives us in terms of uh, ligand coordination. Uh, for four uh, ligands on nickel, we can have uh, two possibilities for, con for the configurations. It's either tetrahedral or square planar. Now, if we um, add in the eight uh, electrons that we should be finding in the d um, orbitals of nickel, we will see that uh, in the tetrahedral case, we have two unpaired electrons. That means that the overall multiplicity should be three. And in the case of square planar, um, all the electrons are paired up. So the overall multiplicity should be one. Um, co a complex where all the electrons are paired up is generally more stable. Um, so most of the D8 uh, metals are actually square planar. So, of course, we will first take the most stable configuration, which is square planar. So let's go with that and try to optimize both of these um, complexes as square planar. So we have charge minus two, multiplicity one. Now, if we look at um, the nickel with four CNs on it. Um, this is what the input looks like. I'm using MO6 as DFT. I'm optimizing and I'm computing 10 orbitals for the population analysis. And I have this form check keyword so that I can check the orbitals um, in 3D in Avogadro after that. And here I have minus two as overall charge and one as multiplicity. Uh, so this complex optimizes no problem. Uh, it looks like this. It's very flat. Uh, it's exactly what we expect. Uh, and everything goes as planned. But then as soon as you get to um, nickel with four chlorines and you try to optimize it as square planar, then you get this weird not exactly flat, but also not exactly tetrahedral, kind of weirdo. Gives you hints that something's wrong. And so I optimized it in the tetrahedral conformation. The input looks like this. So here I have three for the multiplicity, minus two for the charge. Um, Again, I'm using MO6, but now I have to add a U in front of it to have an unrestricted calculation because I have unpaired electrons. Um, this gives you uh, this very nice tetrahedral conformation. The convergence goes very well, very fast. Um, so the question arises as to, well, how come the same D8 
metal uh, decides randomly to change conformation just because you change ligands. Well, uh, you have to really realize that the nature of the ligand um, has a huge influence on how the whole thing goes. Uh, and you can think about uh, kind of the greediness of chlorine versus uh, CN. Because chlorine wants to keep all the electrons to itself, it doesn't particularly want to share them with the metal. So uh, this, um, the orbitals that will be bonding, right, that will be um, stabilized, but just a little bit. And the antibonding will be destabilized, but just a little bit. So that means that this um, difference in energy here in the splitting will be small. And so the complex doesn't really care that much uh, for the unpaired electrons because they will be all jumping around anyway. But then if you go to the CN, it's much more, in a way, liberal um, about its electrons and it w it's okay sharing it um, with the nickel. So uh, that means that the orbitals that will be bonding will be very stabilized and the orbitals that will be antibonding will be very destabilized. That means that the splitting will be big and so unpaired electrons will not be welcome here. Alright, so now let's look at octahedral complexes. Uh, I chose two chromium complexes, one with six chlorines and one with uh, six CO's. So here again, if you do the math, uh, you end up with um, zero electrons in the d orbitals for both of these complexes. Surprise, surprise! Um, so let's see what we get as actual um, orbitals. Alright, so uh, both of these complexes are octahedral. This will be the splitting of the d orbitals that we expect. And now let's check it out. Um, first we will look at the uh, chromium with six uh, chlorines on it. Now if you open the molecular orbitals and you're thinking to yourself, well I have no idea where to look for them, uh, you should open the dot out file in uh, notepad and scroll all the way to the bottom uh, of the file where it says atomic contributions to molecular orbitals. And here very quickly you will be able to notice that you have three degenerate orbitals that are all um, chromium d orbitals um, and they are uh, LUMO LUMO plus 1, LUMO plus 2. But because they're the same energy, there should be all uh, LUMOs. Uh, and this should ring a bell uh, because this is kind of what we expect over here. So they should be the dxy, dxz, and dyz orbitals that we're looking for. Now let's open them in 3D. Sure enough, if we open the LUMO, LUMO plus 1, and LUMO plus 3. These are the three degenerate orbitals that we should see. Now we still have the dz squared and the dx uh, squared minus y squared um, and sure enough they're just um, further up in energy again to degenerate orbitals just as we expect um, with chromium and chlorines um, together. Um, and in the 3D it will look like this, so this will be our dz and this will be the x squared minus y squared. So this is pretty much spot on, no problems here. Now if we repeat the same exercise for um, chromium with uh, six um, COs, on it, we will um, be a bit surprised, or well, maybe not surprised, but we will see that the same three degenerate orbitals 
are now occupied. They're again uh, the, the same three that we had for chlorine, but now they're not virtual anymore, they are occupied. They still look similar, so now they're the HOMO, HOMO minus 1, and HOMO minus 2. Why is that? This is the illustration of backbonding um, right here in front of your amazed eyes. Um, and you can um, do the exercise yourself for the dz squared and the uh, x squared minus y squared again. So I don't want to make this too long. So all this to say that you have to be very careful um, when you're trying to model all of this. Uh, make sure that you know the charge of the complex, you figure out the multiplicity that you're confident with the ligand uh, confirmations. Um, and of course you have to check that the um, theoretical method that you're using is compatible with what you're trying to model um, and that the basis set is big enough to represent uh, your orbitals. Oftentimes uh, the orbitals of metals require kind of larger um, basis set so don't be shy maybe try out a bigger one see how that goes on this i hope that that was useful and i'll see you next time